I want to start out this TED talk like they all should, with some form of impact. And for this, I want to bring in an actual human brain. But I did my research, and it turns out that carrying, transporting, and possessing human organs, that's somewhat illegal. <laughs> so to avoid that, and I hope it suffices, I brought in a very accurate graphical representation of what the brain looks like. <laughs> oh, nice, you noticed. That was sarcasm. <laughs> Ever since I can remember, I've been fascinated by the brain. It's been my little obsession. And if you were to ask me, I would say it's my favorite object in the whole universe. But if you stop for a second to think about it, the way by which I choose what I like is purely based by that same organ. So isn't that a bit narcissistic? Is the brain a little bit too full of itself? How could it not? That pink, jelly-like structure that we all possess within our skulls is this supremely complex, interconnected system of cells. Cells we call neurons. And these neurons exchange little molecules. And through some mechanism that we do not completely understand, regular atoms generate consciousness. And as Alan Watts like to call it, we, be we become an aperture through which the universe is looking at and exploring itself. But what is it about the human brain that makes it so unique? Other species have brains. I notice this discrepancy when I take my dogs hiking with me. Once we reach the top, there's usually this beautiful scenery right in front of us. And I experience this sort of elation, a deep connection with what lies beyond and around me. And then I look at what my dogs are doing. They're just sniffing for the best place to urinate, to pee. <laughs> and I ask myself, how is it possible that two organ organisms that are so similar get to experience such different things? If you take a closer look at the tree or the web of life, you notice that we are practically cousins, if you take into account the bio diversity there exists, obviously. And we share a great overlap of our genetic material, which means we should have fairly similar anatomy, the way we look, and physiology, the way we function. But the key difference seems to fall down to a couple of genes some discovered and some that still remain a mystery that encode for a much greater density of those neurons that I was talking about. And all this in proportion to our body mass. And we become something that Bill Bryson liked to call double lucky. For not only do we enjoy the privilege of existence, but also the singular ability to appreciate it. With this newfound freedom, we get the ability to question try to analyze and comprehend our position in this universe. But soon enough, we realize that we're in somewhat of a pickle. We're born into this world knowing absolutely nothing. The last time I took a look at a baby, all they do is eat, defecate, sleep. That's where it stops. But slowly and surely, as we progress through life, we start creating this idea of what the world is, this form of reality. But this model is a bit flawed. We humans are entities that transduce external stimuli into electrochemical signals that quickly travel through our nervous system and into our mind. Everything there is integrated, and that's what we call reality. But it seems as though reality is much deeper than that which we have a perception of. We can only see, smell, touch, hear, and taste. Take darkness as an example. At some point or another, we were all scared of the dark. I don't know why, Maybe it's a, an innate behavior that drives us towards survival. But scientifically speaking, darkness is everything else that does not have a wavelength between 400 and 700 nanometers. And it seems as though it's a thin slice of reality. And everything else is not darkness, just something that we cannot experience. And this idea, with the scientific advances that are pushing our notion of what real is, with all of these scientists and their discoveries, we've come to a point in which reality becomes something so real, so surreal and distant to us, and something that J.B.S. Haldane so elegantly described as, the universe is not only queerer than we suppose, but queerer than we can suppose. And this to me, well, it's a huge lesson in humility. We can only have varying degrees of certainty about that which we think we know. And every conclusion 
which anyone or us included reaches, can be deficient, as we're only partially connected to this universe. And all those big questions that we all wonder, why are we here, where are we going, death, life, heaven, all those questions, no one has the answers to those. So we're all equally lost and longing. And the minimum we can do for one another is try to understand and empathize, always when possible, with what others think and what others do.